Stop being so anti-woman, you misogynists. And by you, I of course mean the IOC, the International Olympic Committee. And to understand why I'm saying that, it's best to go back a bit. Now look at this article, this report is relatively recent. It's about the Australian women's national team who lost 7-0 to a team of 15-year-old boys. The report goes on, Australia's women's, women's football team are ranked fifth best side in the world. So how did they lose 7-0 to a collection of 15-year-old boys? It is the question gripping the Matildas, who will be targeting a medal at the Rio Olympics in August after they were embarrassed by the Newcastle Jets under-16 sides on Wednesday. Admittedly, this was not the most fiercely competitive of friendly matches, with the women's team in, employing a rotating team. But the Matildas, who often have no choice but to play boys' teams, such is the paucity of opponents in Australia, did have star names such as Katrina Gorey in their lineup. Now, there's a key word in this report which shows why they should have been worried about losing to this particular 15-year-old side. And the clue is that they were boys. You see, it turns out that boys are better than girls at football. Who knew? Now, this report is also relatively recent. Uh, a biological male dominates women's cycling event in historic first. Now, Gillian Bearden was born male, and although not having had sex reassignment surgery, he won a major women's cycling event. He was the first biological male who identifies as a female to win a women's major uh, race in the US uh, for cycling. Gillian Bearden was born a male but identifies as a transgender woman but has not had sex reassignment surgeries. So Gillian Bearden is a man who identifies as a woman. Still a biological man, she was unable to take part in the event. She was sorry, she was able to take part in the event under new rules ushered in by the International Olympic Council or, or committee. Their recent decision, Bearden took victory in the 106 mile Al Tour de Tucson in Arizona at the weekend in a time of four hours 36 minutes, some 25 minutes behind the men's winner. Mexican Olympic cyclist Hugo Wrangel. It's ap absolutely huge, history maker Bearden, 36, told report, local reporters. We're at a time, at a moment of time, when not only do we have to come out, but we have to be positive. We have to come together in solidarity and move this direction, in, country in a direction that is accepting of all. Now, I'm all for uh, acceptance of people who have differences um, of opinion and differences of lifestyle. You know, we don't want to be judgmental. But here we have something crucially different. Here we have women competing and a man winning the race who wasn't good enough to win the men's race. And he was able to do so because of the current political and social climate. You can't argue against someone who claims to be of a certain gender. The IOC has said that it will allow transgender athletes to compete as other sex in the Olympics without having gender reassignment surgery, the Daily Mail, British newspaper and the online version reports. The International Olympic Committee received proposal guidelines in its consens consensus meeting on sex reassignment and hyperandrogenism. Now, these are two different things. The, the sex reassignment is when uh, uh, someone, in, in the cases that we're talking about, is a man who wants to become a woman, although it could be the other way around. And hyperandrogenism is when someone um, appears to be a woman but actually has male levels of testosterone and so uh, has some of the advantages that a man would have in terms of muscle mass and in terms of endurance. The policy change would allow transgender athletes to compete without having gender reassignment surgery. It would allow transgender athletes to complete after one year of hormone replacement therapy, no, surge be, no surgery being required. The change would be in line with the NCAA standards in the United States. Now, that's true, but after a recent legal challenge at the IAAF, the, the position has changed temporarily the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, is not doing any testing of testosterone, which means, of course, someone can claim to be a man, not have the sex reassignment surgery, not reduce their testosterone level, 
and still compete against women. This is what I mean about being anti-woman and misogynist. To allow that to happen just is so unfair, so damaging for women who have, who have in some cases, committed their whole lives to a particular sport. To have that wrenched away from them, because it's no longer just women competing, is anti-woman and misogynist. Now, there was a recent case of uh, someone with higher testosterone levels competing in a woman's race. In a, uh, the, the athlete, Casta Semania, uh, is a woman but has abnormally high levels of testosterone just um, through the, uh, a genetic um, abnormality meaning that she has a lot of male characteristics. Casta Semenya, reading from this article, has sparked a huge debate about who should be allowed to compete in the Olympics after storming through to the women's 800 metres final. Now, this was in the last Olympics. The 25-year-old South African runner breezed through last night's 800 metre semi-finals and is tipped to win gold on Sunday. We're going to look in a moment at an interview after that race. Many are questioning whether she should be allowed to run as a woman. Semenya has hyperandrogenism, a condition which means her testosterone levels are three times that of the average woman, giving her a broad muscular frame. A medical report was leaked to the press, which also revealed that she has internal testes. Here's the reaction of one of the women athletes who competed against Casta Semenya in that race, where where she, Castor Semenya, won. And what about the IOC's change rule, which has allowed people to compete with these higher testosterone levels? And anyway, what about uh, you know transgender um, men who identify as women competing, even if they've had the necessarily necessary supplements to reduce their testosterone? What about them? Competing, we don't actually know what what effect reducing testosterone has in all of its entirety. The 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 oft quoted um, level at which uh, you are able to compete fairly with women uh, is actually just the result of one study. More work needs to be done, and the effects of testosterone increase at puberty in men is not fully understood. It's a complex business, but even even if you accept that just reducing the testosterone to a certain level and accept that we actually know that level, um, even though I don't think we know it yet, but say that we did and we assume, right, that's the right level. Still, it's unfair. This is her and her name is Lindsay Sharp. Um, you can see like how emotional it was like between me and Melissa and Joanna at the end and... We know how each other feel, but it's out with our control and very much relying on the people at the top sorting it out. And like, I think the public can see as well. Sorry, like just how how difficult it is um, with the change of rule. But all we can do is give it our best. I saw you, the three of you, come together there, kind of a hug of unity. Yeah, I mean we see each other week in week out, so. I, yeah, we know how each other feel. <laughs> Stop being so anti-woman and misogynistic. Yes, I'm talking to you, IOC. Stop doing it. Stop ruining the lives of athletes just for political correctness. And get a grip.